So President Trump has come under fire for his tweets this week that the government needs a good shutdown, in his words, to clear up the mess that he's got in the Senate. I'm not sure that he fully understands what he's asking. Now, the reason I say that is because, you see, the problem in the Senate is not the machinations of government. The problems in the Senate is that there are people there who think that they can tell other people what to do and that they drive all of that government spending by simply allocating other people's money to do it. Now, way back in the mid-90s, I'm going to say around 95, I was in the Army, and there were rumors that we were looking at a possible government shutdown. And we were looking at, at the time, we were being told by our superior officers uh, that we might have a period coming up here where you don't get a paycheck. And what they were trying to do is they were trying to kind of uh, put into our minds the idea that we were going to stay at our post and we were going to just kind of tough it out during this time, however long it might be that we don't get a paycheck. And I remember thinking at the time, why would I continue to work for nothing? Why would I continue to put myself in harm's way and not get paid? This is the same thing that happened in the Soviet Union that led to its collapse. I don't know if you recall back in the early 90s, 91, 92, around the same time that the Soviet Union was breaking apart. Part of what caused it was the fact that they had reached the end of their ability to pay primarily their soldiers. And this is a big deal because what was keeping the Soviet Union together at that time was the use of force. I mean, I think it certainly was always that way to a certain degree. And it, I mean, almost every political system that I can imagine relies on either direct use of force or the threat of direct use of force to keep people in line. And what was happening with the Soviet Union here when the soldiers weren't getting paid, you know, at first they were like, well, we'll, we'll just go into the local towns and get the food that we need. Especially since they were based nowhere near their local town, they didn't have a problem with simply going down to the local store and taking stuff off the shelf and saying, bill my commander-in-chief. Well, when they couldn't do that anymore because the stuff was coming off the shelves, there, there was nothing being replaced, they just started leaving their post. And when they left their post, they didn't have the political will anymore to keep people in line, to keep them part of that union, and it came to a vote, and they basically dissolved themselves as a country. When the Soviet Union collapsed. It caused a kind of a ripple effect. I remember back, oh, it was like this whole period, 1989, 1991, where we are seeing like this domino fall of all these different repressive regimes. And now I look at where we're at and I see what's going on in my country. And I'm thinking to myself, how is it any different than the horror that I was described of living under the Soviet Union, where you had to have, you had to carry your identification papers with you everywhere that you went because you might be stopped by a member of the local gendarmes and, and to ask for your, your, identification papers, and if you didn't have it, you'd go to jail and possibly even off to a gulag. And, and goodness knows, if you criticized those who were in power, you were going to be you know, examined to see how crazy you were, to see what kind of drugs they put in your system to make you more compliant. And I look at what's going on right now in my country, and I think, oh my goodness, we are right there. Look at the people who have been kicked out of their jobs, who have actually been arrested and charged with all kinds of phony things because they have been vocal in the criticism of their government. Look at what's going on right now in terms of how many people are on the public dole. And I'm not talking about people who are getting assistance, although that's part of it. I'm talking primarily about the people who consider themselves to be working people who are getting paid out of other people's tax money. If that stopped, how many people would stay at their post and continue to shuffle papers and not get paid for it? We do need a good government shutdown, but we need it more than just a couple of weeks. We, we need it to just shut down, period. That's my point of view. I'd love to engage you on it. Send me an email, steve at radiofreespeech.com. Remember, the phone lines are open. You'll find the link there at the website, radiofreespeech.com. Give me a call, and we'll talk about it.